Hello and welcome back to the channel, where today I'll be starting a new series, The Home Geologist, where I'll be talking about geologic principles and demonstrating them using techniques and materials that you can find in most homes. Today I wanted to talk about specific gravity, which on paper is the weight of a material divided by the difference between that material's weight in air versus that material's weight in water which is kind of an oddball concept when you first think about it, like why does it matter if you measure it in air versus water, shouldn't it weigh the same? But there's a couple of reasons why that's not true. To demonstrate that, since we're in the kitchen, a couple of spices, crushed red pepper and ginger. The crushed red pepper jar is larger, but if I weigh them on my little scale here, the red pepper is about 41 grams and the ginger is 47 grams. So even though the ginger is a smaller jar, it weighs more. And that has to do with how much stuff is packed into these jars, as well as how compact those materials are inside. When you relate that to a mineral, it relates to how those atoms are arranged inside the crystal structure, and then how closely they're packed or how much stuff is jammed in there. And we've all dealt with specific gravity kind of without thinking about it, because it's basically heft. If you look at something and kind of estimate how much it'll weigh, and then you pick it up and it's lighter than you expect it to be, it has a sort of lighter specific gravity than you would expect. Whereas something that weighs a little bit more than you would expect is a little heftier. And it's basically that same concept for specific gravity of minerals. It's just quantified and tabulated and made a little more useful in identifying those minerals in addition to some of their other properties. And when it comes to differences in packing arrangements and how that relates to the specific gravity, for example, one of my favorite examples is calcite, which we have our table in my mineral science book of minerals arranged according to increasing specific gravity. And calcite, which is calcium carbonate, CaCO3, has a specific gravity of 2.72. Aragonite is also CaCO3, calcium carbonate, but the atoms are arranged differently, and it has a specific gravity of 2.95. So it has a higher specific gravity, even though it's made of the same stuff. And one important note here is that it only works for pure minerals or the mineral when it's just the mineral by itself. You cannot get the specific gravity of a rock because it's made of different minerals. That's made more obvious in extreme examples like this, where there's olivine xenoliths inside a basalt matrix. You can't get the specific gravity of either one of these because they're commingled together. What I have here is a gem scale that goes up to 50 grams, which a lot of people might not have this kind of thing in their home, but we're in the kitchen. If you're a baker, you might have a kitchen scale. My kitchen scale's capacity is about 10 pounds, so it has a lot more capacity than my gem scale, but it has a lot lower resolution, where the gem scale goes down to thousandths of a decimal for grams. The kitchen scale rounds everything to a whole gram. The small scale would be more useful for small stones, obviously, but if you have large minerals, then maybe the kitchen scale would be more useful. That's something I wanted to both demonstrate and test today, because I haven't actually tested to see if the specific gravity can actually be calculated with my kitchen scale. Because the specific gravity is a relative weight, there's no units involved, so you can measure in pounds or grams or whatever you want. It all cancels out in the end and is just a unitless number. It doesn't matter if these scales are calibrated to a perfect zero or a perfect like 10 gram material weighs 10 grams because the offset will cancel out as you do the calculation. What I've gathered here today is a few examples of materials that we're going to test out. We have these two faceted purplish pinkish gems depending on how the light hits them and they look very similar but what we're going to test is whether they're actually the same material. We also have this nice bluish semi-clear gem and larger. There's this bright green semi-transparent in the right light. It does have a little bit of a coating of something else on there, but hopefully it's pure enough to get an actual proper measurement. And then larger, we have this chunky material, kind of grayish with a lot of the white is broken material on there. In some light, you can see the light reflecting back at you in the camera. And those may or may not be cleavage planes as kind of a hint to what this is. You can see there's quite a lot of them. If the scale can handle it, we'll check out this slab of something that I got at an auction, which 
And let's see if we get the light just right. Some grains like this one here in the light reflect blue. And so that's a hint to what that is. We've got to weigh these on the scale and then weigh them in water, which is the tricky part. And then we'll do the math. Here's that, here's the smallest gem. 0 0.658, the slightly larger pinkish purple gem, 1.277, our bluish gem, 5.808, and our bright green mineral. You can see that says zero load. That means that it's over capacity for this small scale. Like I said, you can't do this on larger minerals, so we'll have to do the kitchen scale and see if that works. All right, that weighs 95 grams. Obviously, this is too big for the small scale. So that is 706, we'll call that blocky. And then this guy, 1,174 grams. We'll call that the slab. Now weighing them in water is the tricky part. And to do it properly, there's kind of elaborate rigging systems that a lot of professionals will use that takes the water and any container that might have the water totally out of the equation where the jar is suspended above the scale and the weight is dispersed around it and down onto the scale that you lower the rock into. It's complicated and probably expensive, I'm not really sure, but we're gonna go a different route and just use a pill bottle with a little bit of water. And so the pill bottle and the water weighs 39.159 grams. I don't actually care how much it weighs. What I'm gonna do is tear that. So this is my zero point. What we have to do now is get the mineral suspended in that water without touching the sides or the bottom, because if it's touching the bottom, then you're essentially just weighing the mineral again. And to do that, we're gonna use some dental floss. This weighs practically nothing. It's very sturdy, it's cheap. And the tricky part is just to get it properly wrapped around the stone. I guess there's a lot of tricky parts. I keep saying that. Can I do it first try? No. Now we have our stone on the end of the floss and we can carefully lower it down into the water. It's 15 hours later suddenly because the floss wasn't quite cutting it for measuring specific gravity. Holding the floss steady in the scale uh, was nearly impossible. The numbers were fluctuating all over the place. And I think the floss was either absorbing or wicking away moisture. So it was throwing off the balance before and after measuring. What I needed to do was to take my unsteady hand out of the equation. And I did this by cutting out an aluminum can. So it's just a tube. Any tube would do as long as it's bigger around than the scale measuring area. And I still have my vial of water on the scale and it's teared at zero. We just place the can around the scale so it's not touching. And I rigged up a little bamboo skewer stick. A large toothpick might work or something stiff. And I have wrapped around that and extending down just a little bit of picture hanging wire that I've had forever, but a straightened paper clip or some wire of some kind that's stiff would work. And the important thing is to make sure that the apparatus sits in the water, but isn't touching the bottom or the sides. So it's hanging down underneath the water level's surface and then add the gemstones and get a measurement of the gems in water. So just carefully add that to the hanging thing there and we get 0.251 grams for the small purple stone in water. So now we'll do the large purple gem. And it's important to re-tear or re-zero the balance between every measurement because the water may change or get taken out by the gems. Get our gem ready. Place it in the little basket that I made. Set it in there and it's 0.484 grams. And now for our blue gem. It's a small basket, so I have to be kind of careful with this one. 
And if you have a larger gem like this one, it is underneath the water surface just barely, which is it's all it, all it needs. So 2.156. So you can see when I put the basket back in there, we're at negative 0.256. So we lost a bit of water on the gem and that dripped out when I took out the uh, measuring wire basket. And now here's the other thing that kind of threw me yesterday where I was trying to measure this blocky thing that I thought I knew what it was. And I measured it with the kitchen scale and I was getting a result that didn't quite make sense. And so what I did was I broke off a small piece and we're going to measure that in this scale. Oh, we're going to measure it dry first. 1.42, we'll go 1.425. And now we put things back in place. Re-zeroed, and now we'll put the stone back in there. 0.532. Okay, and we'll come back to that later. Now for the kitchen scale, obviously my the stones are too large for that little vial of water, so I've prepared a larger glass bucket of water that we will re-zero. And I actually need to put some floss around this again. Now I have the floss attached to the stones, and I realized I broke off a piece of the stone, so I have to re-weigh it to get a more accurate weight for it. Now it's 684, whereas before it was 706, so it's a little lighter. 685, I guess. And now we can go and measure with our bucket of water, zeroing that out. And we'll start with start with the green stone. It weighs 38 in the water. And floss is okay for this because it's relatively inaccurate, so a little bit of movement isn't going to affect anything. If I lose a little bit of water, it's negligible compared to the weight of the stone. And you can see we lost about a gram of water that's attached to the stone. But that was 38. The blocky one only fits in there vertically. Oop, gotta re-zero that. And get it past there, I think it should be okay. Okay, 258. And now the slab is definitely too big to fit inside there. I'd either have to get a really big bucket there, which would probably have too much water for the weight of the scale. But the other thing I wanted to test with this experiment was whether we could use, say, a bathroom scale for a large enough piece of mineral. And so what I've got is a bucket, and we'll go and test that now. We've got our bucket of water and the slab connected to a dowel rod so it'll hang properly. I'll have to weigh the water first because I can't zero this scale. So let's do that first. It weighs 21.9 pounds. And now we'll hold this just above it and drop that in there. Totally immersed as low as you can go without touching the thing. So I'm lowering it onto the scale. And it says 22.8 pounds. 2.8. Which is a different uh, difference of about 0.9 pounds. And we'll have to do some math to figure out what that means relative to the original dry weight, because the rock itself is too small to register on this scale, so we'll have to use the kitchen scale weight. To convert our 0.9 pound difference into grams in order to make this calculation, we just use a conversion factor of, okay Google, 0.9 pounds to grams. One one seven four divided by four oh eight point two three is two point eight two point eight eight. Two point eight eight is a little high for what this actually is, which is Labradorite. I'd say the conclusion there is that you probably do not want to use your bathroom scale to measure specific gravity. The results of our gem scale measurements, the small purple stone was 2.62 and the large purple stone was 2.64, which is in uncertainty of one another. 
the uncertainty is probably like 0.03 between them. So looking at our chart of measurements, we see 2.65-ish can be quite a range of stones, but these are actually both varieties of quartz that are amethyst. That was a little unexpected for me because I thought this small gemstone was going to be Yag that I faceted, but I grabbed the wrong stone apparently. It shows you that you can't fool specific gravity because garnet is a 3.5 to 4.3 specific gravity, so it's very different. The blue stone is 2.69 which is also in that range. And if you were to go through and look at other properties of it, you know, the semi-transparent nature, light blue, it's actually a variety of barrel known as aquamarine. And so that range is 2.65 to 2.8, but it's obviously not something like calcite or labradorite. The green stone came in at 2.5 specific gravity, and it's relatively soft. It has a kind of waxy luster no real cleavage to speak of. And with those properties, and I know where I collected that, the 2.5 range for that green stone is well within the serpentine range, which is 2.2 to 2.65. There are variations within the specific gravity of a lot of these minerals because of the variations of the components that make them up. And what kind of surprised me was the blocky stone the large gray one was a 2.65 specific gravity. And that was confirmed with my gemstone where I broke up a small piece and it was 2.68, so they're basically the same. What I thought this was was fluorite because of the cleavage planes and somewhat the color, but it's definitely not fluorite, which has a specific gravity of 3.18. It's very different, definitely not within that uncertainty. Since most of these stones wound up being about 2.65 in specific gravities, I thought it would be good to show some stones actually have different specific gravities. And so this is an actual piece of fluorite, and so let's see if we can use our gem scale to actually calculate a value close to the fluorite specific gravity that it's supposed to be, and show that I wasn't just calculating erroneously. And as you know, to do that, weigh this in air, and it will have a weight of 5.378. And then we'll set up our measuring apparatus of our water jug and our soda can. Three zero. Carefully add in the stone. And again, making sure that it's underwater and it's touching the side right now, so I gotta fix that. There we go. And now that weighs 1.687 in water. 5.378 divided by 1.687 is 3.19, which is almost exactly on for the fluorite specific gravity. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching the first episode of The Home Geologist. Be sure to like and subscribe to see future videos, and I think the next one we'll be talking about streak. I hope to see you then. I was starting by assuming that the floss had a mega... It's 15 days later suddenly, be... 15 days. Join me next time as I think we'll be talking about streak. <laughs> and I hope you join me next time as we... How do you do an outro?